Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number six in the CSRF module titled CSRF where token is duplicated in cookie. All right, let's get started. This lab's email change functionality is vulnerable to CSRF. So we've got the vulnerable parameter is the email change functionality. It attempts to use the insecure double submit CSRF prevention technique. So it has some kind of technique to defend against CSRF attacks. However, it's an insecure one, and that's what we're going to exploit to perform our CSRF attack. To solve the lab, use your exploit server to host an HTML page that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address. So the goal of this exercise is to exploit the CSRF vulnerability to change the email address of the victim user. You can log into your own account using the following credentials, and it's these credentials over here. The fun fact about today is that I usually, when creating these videos, I usually prepare the videos up front. So I solve the exercise, I create my script and so on, and then I record the video. However, for this lab, I haven't solved it before. So this is going to be the first time I solve it, which is why the creds over here, we've got the creds of the previous lab, because this is the notes document from the previous lab, since based on the exercise title, it might be very similar to the previous lab. But for now, we only need one set of creds, and these are the ones that are on the notes document. So let's access the lab. And while that loads up, we'll open up Burp Suite Professional, just like we do with other labs. So if you don't have the professional edition of Burp, don't worry, for the first part, we'll use the professional version, and then we'll script the exploit on our own. So hit next, and then start Burp. This looks good. Next, we need to log into our account. And the password was Peter. Hit login. All right, and this is the vulnerable change email functionality. So we'll add an email address. And before we do that, we need to set Foxy Proxy to send requests to Burp and hit update email. Should have intercepted the request in the proxy. So click on proxy and here we go. This is the request. We're gonna send this to repeater, turn intercept to off and work from repeater. All right, so we said that a page is vulnerable to CSRF if it satisfies three conditions. The first one is a relevant action, which in this case is the email address, the change email address functionality. This is definitely relevant because if we have control on uh, changing the email address of a user, then we could potentially compromise the user's account. And so it has detrimental effect to the client if it's possible, which makes it a relevant action. So this is satisfied. The second one is cookie-based session handling. So the application has to be using cookies for session handling, which it does over here. You could see that it uses a cookie called session in order to manage the session of the user. So this is satisfied as well. The last one is no unpredictable request parameters. The application here uses two parameters. One is the email address, which is definitely predictable because it's the email address that we want uh, to change to. So in this case, we can predict it. It's going to be the email address of the attacker. However, you could see that there is another parameter, a CSRF token, which looks like it's a random number and so is unpredictable. So at first thought, this looks like it's definitely not vulnerable to CSRF attack. However, depending on how this CSRF CSRF defense mechanism is implemented, we might be able to bypass it and still exploit the vulnerability. So in previous labs, we discussed testing CSRF tokens. That's when you only had a CSRF token in the parameters. However, as we can see in this case, we have a CSRF parameter but we also have a CSRF cookie. So this doesn't apply in the lab. Let's move on to the next one. In the previous lab, we encountered a scenario where we had both a CSRF token and a CSRF cookie, and they weren't equal. So we applied a few steps in order to see if we could exploit it. And that's what we're gonna do in this lab as well. Now, notice over here, the parameter starts with B, M, G, and so on. And then the CSRF cookie is exactly the same as the parameter. So this is slightly different from what we saw in the previous lab. This scenario leads me to believe that they're using something 
called the double submit cookie or the double submit defense. And what that does is the CSRF cookie and the CSRF parameter are both sent to the backend. And if they're equal, so their values are equal, then the request is accepted. If their values are not equal, the request is not accepted. So you usually see this uh, being used in stateless applications. So the applications that don't store any session state or session cookies in the backend, for example, applications that make use of JWT tokens. So they usually use these double submit defense in order to defend against uh, CSRF attacks. Now, in this case, this is clearly not stateless because this looks like it's a random uh, session. It has to be stored at the backend. However, they are using the double submit defense. And what we need to do is try to exploit it in order to perform a CSRF attack. So usually with double submit cookies, the cookie value doesn't matter because it's not stored in the backend. All it does is when you submit the request, it takes this value and then it takes this value over here. It checks if they're equal. If they're equal, it accepts it. If they're not equal, it doesn't accept it. So this could be anything. So let's just say, for example, test and say test over here. It should accept both of them. So let's hit send and we get a 302. That's a good sign follow redirection and we get a 200 OK message. And you could see that the email was changed to test at test.ca. So it doesn't really matter what the value of the CSRF cookie is and what the value of the CSRF parameter is as long as they're both equal. So this is good. Now, in order to exploit this vulnerability, and we don't need this anymore because it's from the previous lab. So in order to exploit this vulnerability, what we need to do is find the location in the application to inject the CSRF cookie in the user session. And let's remove this right now. So that's an HTTP header injection. And then we also need a CSRF attack to the victim with a known CSRF uh, token. And in this case, it doesn't have to be a valid token. It could be anything just like we saw over here, as long as that token is equal to the uh, CSRF cookie that we're going to inject in the user's browser. So we're gonna go back to the lab and hit my home and hit home. So in the previous exercise, we noticed that there's a CSRF cookie and there's a session cookie. However, when we searched for an item, so let's say, um, let's change this up again. Let's say hat and hit search. A new cookie was created called last search term, and it has the term that we searched on. So if we go to burp suite professional and then go to proxy HTTP history, you could see over here, this is our search functionality. So the search term is hat over here that we want to search on. And notice over here, it set a cookie called last search term and it contained the search term value. So if we could potentially exploit this, so if this is not properly validated, the user input, and it allows for dynamic uh, generation of HTTP headers, then we might be able to get out of this search uh, field and get the application to set the CSRF cookie for us. So let's send this to repeater and work from there. So to do that, we're going to apply the same thing we did in the previous lab. So add a new line. So that's done using percent zero D and then percent zero A and then say set cookie. And then add a space. So that's 20. And then say CSRF is equal to and in this case, we just set test and hit send and see if it sets the cookie and it did. So notice over here, it says set cookie CSRF is equal to test. So we've satisfied this first condition. Now, all we need to do is uh, perform our CSRF attack, which we've done in previous labs. So to do that, let's go back to the email change functionality. That's the functionality that is vulnerable to CSRF hit engagement tools, and then generate CSRF POC. This is only available in the professional edition. Again, if you don't have the professional edition, don't worry. We'll be scripting the exploit in the second part of the video that doesn't require buying the professional edition. So the first thing to do is click on options and then include auto submit script and regenerate. This adds um, a script tag in order to automatically submit the form. We're gonna remove that in a bit. 
but let's start off with the beginning of the script. So we've got the form element, it changes the email address, it applies a post method. You've got the email over here, this is the email we want to change it to. So let's say test3 at test.ca and then you've got another hidden element, so that's the CSRF token. In this case we do want it to be test, so it can be anything as long as this and the CSRF cookie are of equal value. And then you've got the submit button. Next, we're going to remove this over here. Instead of automatically submitting the form, we're going to add an image element. So let's say image and then SRC. So the source of the image, and that's going to be the URL where we perform the header injection. So let's go to this one over here. That's where we performed it. First, get the domain of the application. Let's copy that. Put it in here, add HTTPS, and then add the header injection, copy that, put it in here, and this looks good. So I'm going to resubmit this to make sure that the application didn't time out, and it didn't. All right, that's good. So we've got the source of the image, and then we're going to say on error, submit the form. So document.forms0.submit, and close off the image tag. So this looks good. So what it's going to do is it'll first try to load this image by visiting this URL over here, which performs the HTTP header injection. and this is not a valid image, so it's going to throw an error, and when it does, it's going to submit the form. So this form over here, which performs the CSRF attack, this way it's all done in one go. So let's test this in the browser, copy it, and see if it works. Hit enter, and we get an invalid CSRF token, which is weird. So we've got CSRF is equal to test. That looks good. And I think we copied this incorrectly. I believe we missed a character over here. And yeah, it's a question mark character. And that's why this didn't run correctly. The CSRF token didn't set to test. And so it was invalid. And we, we could probably see that in proxy. Let's do that over here. Um, so you could see over here, the CSRF token is the one that was originally there, but the parameter is test. They're not equal. And so you get an invalid CSRF token, which makes sense. So now let's do this the correct way. Test in browser, hit copy, and then hit paste and send. And here we go. It changed the email address to test3 at test.ca. So our attack was successful. Let's go back to Burp Suite Professional and look at the attack. So over here, it correctly set the CSRF cookie to test. And you could see in the parameter, it's also test. And since they're equal, the attack was successful. Now notice we didn't get a congratulations, you solved the exercise. And the reason behind that is because we used the Burp Suite server instead of the Web Security Academy exploit server. So we're going to do that right now just so that we get that message. So all you need to do is copy this over here, put it in the body, and then store, and then deliver exploit to victim. And then you should see the message. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability using Burp Suite Pro and manually using the Community Edition, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the share and subscribe button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.